Hi guys, Ollie here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm a final year med student at the University of Warwick. One of the common questions that came through uh, when I asked you guys to pitch in was what are exams like in medical school? I've come to realise that examination or deciding that how you are going to assess someone at something and decide how good they are at it is actually really, really complicated. And there are academics and researchers who dedicate their entire lives to coming up with frameworks for competency-based assessment and so on. And the reason why I'm beginning with this preamble at all is that medical school is actually really complicated, right? Because you think about the number of different skills, it's not just the academic knowledge, it's not just the anatomy, the physiology, the pharmacology, the histopathology, all the rest of it. How do they interact with colleagues? Can they interpret clinical imaging? How do they interact with a patient or someone who doesn't know the science that they do but can they communicate that information in such a way that that person can understand it that's a very definite skill that most exams are not going to be able to capture very well but it is something that's really really important for junior doctors and so the reason why i've discussed that first is that i think before we move on and i discuss what exams are actually like at medical school we need to appreciate that actually designing exams and underpinning them with some sort of academic methodological framework that is evidence-based is actually really hard. And I think this difficulty leads to a lot of the variation that we see, because the next thing to say is that medical schools actually vary hugely in how they assess their students. There are no universally agreed uh, ways in which to do this, and you see this not just by looking at the variation in UK medical schools, but medical schools all around the world. They're all quite different, and different people will do different things. So I'm going to be talking about my experience at Warwick in terms of what the exams are like, but I'm very well aware that other medical schools will use very different types of exams. And if you're thinking about going to medical school, that might be something you can ask, you know, what sorts of exams uh, do they do here at this medical school because they will all be slightly different. So with that out of the way, what are exams like at medical school? I think the best and most obvious place to start is with what's called the written or knowledge-based component, if you like, the more theoretical academic knowledge. This is just stuff you have to know about the body, you know, as we were saying, anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, pharmacology, immunology, all of the more abstract things that you need to have in your head which you will then later apply uh, in the real world and this can again be done in a number of ways most commonly this is done using a format called mcq or multiple choice questioning which you will all be very very familiar with i'm sure you get presented with a series of answers only one of which is correct so a typical medical school mcq just for example might be something like this uh, young male patient let's say 21 comes in with back pain, particularly worse at the bottom of his back and in the sacroiliac region towards the bottom. Over the last few months, his lower back has felt increasingly stiff and he's essentially starting to curl over forwards. Then it might ask you which human leukocyte antigen, uh, if you were to test for, is likely to be positive in this patient and then give you a series of five. And just because of the nature of this question, these are all gonna look quite similar. You might have like HLA DR3, DR4, and crucially in this question, HLA B27. Because this question relies on you being able to tell what the underlying condition is likely to be, in this case, ankylosing spondylitis. But it's not as simple as simply knowing that. You have to then remember which HLA group is associated with ankylosing spondylitis. And in this case, that's human leukocyte antigen B27. And I would say that's what the difficulty of particularly getting towards finals level questions are usually like. Usually there will be between five and seven fairly similar looking answers. One of them might be obviously wrong, but the others should probably all look pretty reasonable. Then like I say, you've got to put the pieces together and try and eliminate down to the correct one. That's how MCQs normally are. The other question type that we used to have at Warwick but doesn't really seem to be a thing anymore is what's called SAQs or short answer questions. And these, unlike MCQs where you have a load of predetermined choices, SAQs for us were usually free text short answers. So you might have three or four empty lines, you know, which would correspond to maybe three to four marks. And they might ask you something like, describe all the steps that take place to conduct an action potential through the neuromuscular junction. 
and initiate contraction of a muscle, for example. And this is obviously slightly different in that you need deeper knowledge of what's actually going on here. And you might be looking for key moments, essentially, in a cycle like this, where acetylcholine in its little vesicles gets released, mediated by calcium ions, they move into the synaptic cleft, then they go and activate receptors on the other side of the cleft, and then eventually the acetylcholine gets eaten up by an esterase, and so on and so forth. You'll need enough knowledge of this kind of succinct topic to write three or four marks worth of material. And that I think historically has also been quite a common question type because you can't guess your way to an answer like you can with an MCQ. Now just to address other ways of assessing knowledge that I've heard of uh, from other medical schools but not experienced myself, some of them like essays um, occasionally, particularly in the preclinical years where you might be asked to, to write, I don't know, 10, 12 marks on some complex aspect of the immune system or something like that. You might have things like clinical imaging, so x-rays, CT scans, MRI scans. All of these things are kind of fair game and can be baked into any of the other formats quite easily. And the other one that you hear about is anatomy spotters. And again, this isn't really a thing that I've ever experienced myself, but what you might have is something like an anatomy specimen or a skeleton or something and they put pins in particular muscles or vessels or things that they would like you to point out and a demonstrator who is there might go what is this the blue pin what structure is it stuck into or what would happen if there was a lesion in this nerve here what would the patient experience just as in the same way as you would need to understand it were it described to you in the stem of an MCQ. But then, as I was saying before, the other thing we need to consider is clinical knowledge. How does this person interact with other patients? And are they capable of examining a patient properly, eliciting signs, and basically giving someone the once over for whatever system you like, whether that's the brain, the heart, the lungs, the abdominal system, the gastrointestinal system. We have to be able to examine people because as a junior doctor, that's what we're going to be doing a lot and crucially not missing potentially dangerous things. And one of the more universal ways that this is done at medical schools is something called OSCEs, Objective Structured Clinical Examinations. And these are usually timed, so, you know, five, seven, eight minutes, whatever you like. Basically a short period of time in which you're usually given one or two tasks. So I might go into my OSCE and I might say, okay, Ollie, uh, you've got this 45 year old woman who presented with chest pain. We would like you to examine her cardiovascular system. And so this is the more practical clinical component where I can't hide behind my academic knowledge, I suppose, or lack thereof. I need to actually examine the patient in front of me looking like I know what I'm doing and being able to pick up on any signs that are there. So in this case, in a cardiovascular exam, that might mean inspecting their hands, looking for signs of cyanosis, infective endocarditis, feeling the pulse in the wrist, measuring the blood pressure in the arm, having a look at the jugular vein in the neck, inspecting the eyes for signs of things like fat deposits, you know, looking essentially for sort of peripheral stigmata of disease that she might have, and actually having a look at the chest and the precordium, having a listen to the heart sounds in all of the pre-specified places where I'm gonna best hear each of the heart valves and doing various maneuvers and things to make it look like I know what I'm doing. And it may well be that someone has exam findings. They may be a real patient. They may just be an actor who doesn't have anything to find. But I guess the long and short of it is that someone could have a heart murmur, say, for all I know. And if I listen to their heart and I don't pick up on a murmur, especially one that is quite obvious to the examiner, that might be a problem. So I do everything that I'm doing, finish up and say, you know, I examined this lady today. My positive findings are this, this, and this. I did not find evidence of this and this. Therefore, I think this examination is in keeping with a diagnosis of whatever disease. And OSCEs aren't just examinations as well. It's not just mauling a patient around. There are lots of other things that you can be asked to do. You might be asked to calculate a patient's BMI, for example, and then do some lifestyle and weight counseling with them. You might be asked to measure their blood glucose, discuss the possibility of diabetes, or potentially counsel someone who wants contraception and sort of go through the options available and work out the best one for them. And these are all things that as a med student, you'll probably experience 
in one form or another, especially during your GP rotations. And they're not scary as such, it just means that your general knowledge has to be pretty good because any of these things could appear. And the last thing I'm going to talk about today is something called a long case. And these vary hugely by medical school in how they're done. At Warwick, these are called Oslers. I think it's the objective structured long examination record or something like that, named after William Osler. But long cases usually appear around finals because the name long cases encompasses you going to see a patient, taking a history from them, performing an examination on them of your choice. So you might take a history and they've got chest pain or something. So you might say, I'm going to examine the heart or they say they've turned yellow or something. So you might do a gastrointestinal exam. And this is essentially designed to be a holistic assessment of a patient by you from start to finish. So history, exam, reporting your findings to an examiner, and then usually being grilled for some period of time on the underlying pathophysiology. So if someone's got chest pain, for example, and they come in, you need to start separating out all the potential differential diagnoses. Is this gastroesophageal reflux? Is this pancreatitis? Is this a raging STEMI that's going to kill them? Is it pericarditis? Is it musculoskeletal? You've got to decide all this and you'll usually be asked, what are your top three differential diagnoses and what tests would you like to do in order to rule different ones out? Ultimately, what do you think it is? How are you going to manage this patient? What are their problems? How are you going to counsel them? And you might be asked to do things like explain a procedure that they might need to have like, oh, doctor, they say I've got to go for a CT scan to have a look at my head. What's a CT scan? Just essentially things that we're all going to have to do commonly as doctors in the day to day and just making sure that we're ready to go out into the big wide world and not kill anyone. Fingers crossed. There we go, guys. That's my ramble on what exams are like in medical school. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, there are three ways that you can help and support the channel. The first is by liking, commenting, and subscribing. The second is you can buy me a coffee using my Ko-Fi link and help keep me awake during the editing process. My eye bags are Gucci. The third is you can use my referral link in the description below to save yourself 10% off Complete Anatomy 2021, my favorite anatomy learning tool. Take care, and I will see you next time.